Hi. We have something a bit different today. Despite centuries of exploration and scientific research, much of the world's oceans remain unexplored, and we have only scratched the surface of our understanding of this vast, mysterious realm. It is estimated that we have explored less than 20% of the world's oceans, with much of the remaining 80% still largely uncharted and unknown. This is due in part to the sheer size and depth of the oceans, as well as the challenges involved in studying them. The deep sea, for example, is an especially difficult environment to explore, with crushing pressures, extreme temperatures and complete darkness. In recent years, advances in technology and oceanographic research have enabled scientists to explore previously inaccessible parts of the ocean, such as the deep sea vents, and uncover new species and ecosystems that were previously unknown to us. However, much of the ocean remains unexplored, and there is still much to learn about the role of the ocean in regulating the Earth's climate and supporting life on our planet. It's also true that we have mapped more of the Moon's surface than we have of our own oceans. Wild. This is partly due to the fact that the Moon is much closer to Earth than the deep ocean and is therefore more accessible to exploration and mapping. The Moon is much closer to Earth than the deep ocean? That can't be right. Especially if we're talking about distance, no? I'll confirm after this. I just assumed that more people have gone to space in the deep sea due to general interest and budget. Tech. The pressure makes it difficult. More money is allocated to space exploration than deep sea exploration. Maybe I completely misunderstood what he meant. In contrast, much of the world's oceans remain largely uncharted and unknown, with only a small fraction of the ocean floor having been mapped in detail. This is due in part to the challenges of exploring the deep ocean, which is a hostile and difficult environment to study. Interestingly, in recent years, divers and fishermen have come forward and detailed their strange experiences while being in and around the world's oceans. One diver posted the following story to social media. He said the following, I worked with a guy who used to be a deep sea welder. He also worked on various things in the ocean, such as rigs, which would require him to dive deep beneath the ocean. He got talking one day as we shared a lot of things in common, and he told me about some of the strange things that we witnessed while carrying out jobs in the ocean. Due to the years of experience that he had, he told me that he could easily identify wildlife and said that he would often encounter things like deep sea fish, sharks, along with various squid species. He said that saturation diving pays well, As it but should. it's a job that carries its risks and that this encounter made him think twice about re-entering the water. He said that on this one occasion, he and a team was called out to a big job, which saw him and the team assembling and maintaining an oil rig and pipelines. While he was down there, each of the team had their positions. He detailed that the visibility wasn't great, and that it was overall a difficult job to carry out. He said that on day five he got into position and started working, but after about 20 minutes he kept on feeling something heavy touch his back. At first he thought it might have been another team member, but when he turned around, there was no one there. His second thought was that it could have been a school of fish, going on to say that these underwater structures are somewhat of an attractor for smaller species, as they act like protection for them. When it happened, he said that a few minutes later, he was able to get a glimpse of this thing, and said the only way he could describe it was that it looked like some type of squid. He detailed that the organism put him into a sort of trance, saying that it did this by changing shape and colour. He said that he had never experienced anything like it before, as he was still awake and knew what was going on, but noted that he couldn't move. Weird. The reason that he said the organism was like a squid is because this is the only animal that he was aware of that had this type of ability, although he did say that he'd never encountered anything that looked like this creature. He said that he's never got over the fact that this creature was able to paralyse him without touching him. You think he was paralysed due to fear? I definitely would be. Some type of mental paralysis. That's what makes logical sense to me. The skeptic in me wants to say that this is just some tall tale that someone posted to social media. But I don't know. There are probably so many animals and creatures that live deep in the ocean that just kind of defy our current understanding of science. And I've heard other stories of divers saying that they've encountered weird species. 
but an animal with a hypnotic effect like that. Maybe some of you have more experience with diving in deep sea than I do, so leave your thoughts on this. When I asked whether anyone else had seen all of this unfold, he told me that he was behind a large piece of equipment that obstructed his view, saying that all of the other members of the diving team were working on areas of the rig that were out of view, so and although so a team scared. was within the area, none of them could see each other. He also said that these structures are massive, and even if they were working close together, the visibility in the region that they were in wasn't great. He continued saying that once the creature approached him, getting within around 10 feet, he said that it slowed down its coloration and stopped moving its body into different shapes, and once it did this, he then started to regain movements in his arms and legs. After the creatures swam off, he said that he had an incredibly painful headache and felt very dizzy. On the day of the encounter, he said that everything was fine before he entered the water. He didn't complain of having a headache, he didn't have a drink or anything in his system that would compromise him, so he was sure about what he had witnessed. Strange. When I questioned him on the size of the creature, he said that it was difficult to say, and the only thing he remembered about its size was that it was much bigger than him. He was certain that it wasn't a common squid species that he had encountered before, saying that normally the areas where he worked had much smaller squids, and that they couldn't do what this creature did. He said he tried to research what this thing was, but every time he did, he came up empty, being unable to find a squid or creature that matched what he encountered. At the time, he said that I was the only person he told the story to, and that he didn't want anyone knowing about it. He did admit that he was scared to go back into the water, as this organism possessed the ability to control him, and it's something Makes that sense. really surprised him, as he'd never had this happen to him before. Even though the encounter only lasted a minute or so, it was something that he didn't want to relive. He said that the headache lasted about a week, and it was easily the worst headache he'd ever had before. After this experience, he said that he never encountered the creature again, and that as of today, he has no idea what it was that he encountered. End quote. Interestingly, this diver isn't the first person to come forward and say that they encountered a mysterious creature while diving in the ocean, and it's led some to suggest that there's undiscovered species that people are encountering that are not yet known to science. Oddly enough, just recently, scientists came forward and proposed that octopuses might be aliens or originated from space. The idea that octopuses might have originated from space is based on the fact that they are highly intelligent and exhibit some unique traits that are not seen in other animals on Earth. Octopods are very intelligent, but so are dolphins. I don't think they originate from space personally. I'm also not a scientist, so how would I know? For example, <laughs> octopuses have a complex nervous system and can change color and texture to camouflage themselves in their environment. That's beautiful. Additionally, their genetic makeup is quite different from other animals leading some to speculate that they might have evolved independently from a different ancestor than other animals on Earth. Another thing to keep in mind is that animals belonging to the group Cephalopoda can grow to extreme sizes. The largest squid species in the world is the giant squid, which is also one of the largest invertebrates in the world. Giant squids can grow up to 43 feet, or 13 meters in length, and can weigh up to 600 pounds, or 272 kilograms. Too big for Giant me. squids have a mantle body that can reach lengths of up to 8 feet or 2.5 meters and two long feeding tentacles that can reach lengths of up to 30 feet. They have eight arms that are lined with suction cups and are used for grabbing prey and bringing it to their beak-like mouth. Despite their large size, not much is known about the behavior and biology of giant squids as they live in the deep ocean and are rarely encountered by humans. The first footage of a live giant squid in its natural habitat was captured in 2012 by a team of Japanese scientists using a specialized underwater camera. Ooh. Since then, several more sightings and captures of giant squids have been reported, providing new insights into their biology and behavior. Scientists are constantly discovering new species in the world's oceans, but it is difficult to estimate the exact number of new oceanic species that are discovered each year. This is partly due to the fact that many parts of the ocean remain unexplored and new species are often discovered during research expeditions and surveys. According to the World Register of Marine Species, which maintains a database of all known marine species, an average of around 2,000 new marine species are described and named each year. 
Can you imagine how many more species we could find if we had better resources and technology? However, this number can vary widely from year to year, depending on factors such as the level of research funding and the number of expeditions and surveys that are conducted. It is important to note that the discovery of new species is just the first step in understanding the biodiversity of the oceans, and much more research is needed to understand the ecological roles of these species and how they interact with each other and with their environment. Additionally, many oceanic species remain undiscovered or poorly studied, highlighting the need for continued research and conservation efforts to protect these vital ecosystems. Scientists have come forward and said that the oceans are difficult to map for a number of reasons. The average depth of the ocean is around 3,800 meters, or 12,000 feet, and the deepest parts of the ocean can reach depths of over 11,000 meters, or 36,000 feet. This makes it difficult to explore and map the ocean floor using traditional methods, as the water pressure at such depths is immense and can damage or destroy equipment. Yeah, the moon is definitely not closer to us than the deepest part of the ocean. The Come ocean right. covers over 70% of the Earth's surface, making it a vast and complex environment to study. The vast majority of the ocean floor remains unexplored, and only a small fraction of it has been mapped in detail. Mapping the ocean floor requires specialized equipment, such as sonar systems and underwater vehicles, which are expensive and often difficult to operate in the harsh underwater environment. The ocean is subject to constantly changing weather and environmental conditions, which can make it difficult to conduct research and obtain accurate measurements. Unlike land, which can be easily accessed and studied by researchers, much of the ocean is inaccessible to humans due to its depth and the challenges involved in conducting research in underwater environments. Despite these challenges, advances in technology and oceanographic research have enabled scientists to make significant progress in mapping and understanding the ocean. For example, the use of satellite technology and underwater vehicles has enabled scientists to explore previously inaccessible parts of the ocean and obtain detailed maps and data on the ocean floor. However, much more research and exploration is needed to fully understand the complexity and importance of the ocean and its role in supporting life on our planet. The total number of species in the ocean is difficult to estimate accurately, as the vast majority of the ocean remains unexplored and many species are still waiting to be discovered. However, scientists have identified and named approximately 250,000 marine species to date, and it is estimated wow. that there could be anywhere from 500,000 to 10 million more species that have yet to be discovered. I believe marine the species number. come in a wide variety of forms and sizes, from tiny plankton to massive whales, and live in a range of habitats, from shallow coral reefs to the deep ocean trenches. The ocean is also home to a high level of biodiversity, with many species exhibiting unique adaptations to their environment, such as bioluminescence, camouflage, and extreme temperature tolerance. The oceans are critically important for our planet in many ways. The oceans play a crucial role in regulating the Earth's climate. They absorb and store large amounts of carbon dioxide and help to regulate the Earth's temperature and weather patterns. The oceans are home to a vast array of plant and animal species, many of which are still undiscovered. This biodiversity is important for maintaining the health and stability of the ocean ecosystem and provides important benefits to human populations, such as food, medicines and recreation. The oceans provide a significant source of food for millions of people around the world, particularly in developing countries where fish and seafood are a major source of protein. The ocean also supports many livelihoods, such as fishing, shipping and tourism. Phytoplankton, tiny plants that live in the ocean, are responsible for producing over half of the oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere. They are also a critical part of the ocean food web, providing food for many other marine species. Despite their importance, the oceans are facing numerous threats. It is important that we take action to protect and conserve the health and biodiversity of the oceans for the benefit of both current and future generations. So, what do you make of the mysterious squid story and what do you think the diver encountered? Be sure to leave your questions and answers in the comments section below. The Lassophobia. I liked the story time mixed with some ocean facts. It reminded me a bit of a Mr. Nightmare or Mr. Ballin video, but this was from Unexplained Mysteries. I'm going to link it in the description for you. 
But assuming you believe the diver's story, what do you think happened? He saw something. I'd believe that. Personally, my logical mind doesn't think that there are aliens at the bottom of the ocean. But that's just me. Unless we're using the word alien to mean foreign, in which case, yes, there are many. So many animals with characteristics that we don't see on land. They're in a different environment. So foreign to us. But unmanned missions have only shown us so much so far. So we'll circle back <laughs> if they find anything else. I know some of you have probably worked underwater or have some experience diving. If you have any stories of that, leave your accounts. You're probably the closest I'll ever get to anything like that. I'm going to find another video like this and I'll cover it over on Patreon. But leave your thoughts <laughs> and hypotheses. I'll see you next time.